All right, how's it going? This is Sam Welker with thinkparticle.com. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a really cool effect. Now, uh, you've seen it on the screen already, uh, hopefully, but uh, on the, um, the video that you push play on. But uh, before we get started, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. Uh, I am the owner of thinkparticle.com and we make tools and training for artists and I also do uh, contractor work as well. Uh, but um, anyways, uh, we've been developing tools for years and uh, we've had just an amazing support from everybody and we're thankful for your support and uh, hopefully this training is a great way for us to give back for all of that support we received. So anyways, uh, check out thinkparticle.com for more uh, training tools and resources that can help you out. Uh, they're proven, tested, and used by a lot of great customers. So uh, today's effect is going to be this effect here. We start with, with a solid plane and have it extrude uh, in these hexagonal shapes, and then they go right back down, and it creates this kind of, um, this, uh, I, I kind of like to call it a Nike commercial effect because it looks like we're getting this solid plane, and it's kind of um, pulling out this, um, this extrusion, and then it pulls back in into what looks like the bottom of a sneaker. Uh, so maybe it's not that, uh, maybe it could be something else, but this is a really cool honeycomb effect and it's a really easy grid to set up. Now, if you have the studio version of Cinema 4D, that's all you need. I'm going to render it in Octane, uh, but let's go ahead and I'm actually not going to render in this tutorial, but we're going to build the rig, uh, and we're going to set it up. Now it's a slow rig. I do have to warn you, this is really slow. Uh, so, um, that means you need to be aware that, uh, this is going to take some, uh, some, your, your system is going to take a little bit of a hit. Uh, so I exported an Alembic and that helped me um, because we are doing some really complicated stuff here. But let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm just going to build in this scene uh, right here because I already have all the lighting and materials set up and that's not what today's about. Uh, so let's just uh, put everything I have in a null object and call this original and then we will save this scene and then this will be uh, tutorial 59. I've done uh, three of those now. so. Hopefully, uh, it will be a good one. Okay, and uh, the first step of what we need to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and just hide everything in that scene. And uh, the basically the concept here is we need hexagons um, uh, to create this. So I find the easiest way to do that is to create a disk and give it... Uh, uh, six um, rotation segments and uh, actually you know what there might be a better way to do this let's do this uh, through an end side because uh, then we don't have to edit the geometry like I did previously uh, but we'll just drop this in an extrude and uh, disable any movement and uh, that turns off the uh, um, extrusion so now we have this geometry here and um, oh also quick shout out by the way to oh that's uh, video game stuff uh, for development, um, to Ian. Um, Ian is a very talented uh, motion graphics artist. You can check out his Vimeo page here uh, and um, you can learn more about his work. Uh, he showed me a tip on how to create this effect. Um, and his is a little different, but let's go ahead and uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started now. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and uh, drop this in a cloner and we're gonna set this in a honeycomb array on the X, Z axis. And uh, ironically, that fit perfectly, not even ironically, just beautifully, that fit perfectly right off the bat. So uh, I didn't plan that, but uh, sometimes talent just leaks into things. Uh, but in my case, I got lucky. All right, so we've got this grid here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and make it 15 by 30. And that's going to be about this scale here. It'll be nice to work with. And uh, okay, so this is how this works. Um, we set this up in a null object now uh, under the cloner and uh, we're going to take that and under this null object we'll call this the rig and uh, we're going to drop in a poly effects um, object so I'm going to go back to my standard layout so you can follow along a little bit better because uh, usually everybody can follow this very easily uh, so we're going to grab um, a uh, actually not poly effects we're using mo extrude and uh, we will set it to have one extrusion step and let's just uh, let's scale it in pretty intensively and then bring it down. And uh, for some reason, it's going upside down. So let's go into the extrude object and flip the normals. And uh, that doesn't seem to do it. Oh, you know what? Um, if we reverse, 
Hmm, that's actually really odd uh, that it is going upside down. So uh, let's see. I'm going to figure that out, and then we will um, go ahead and, uh, you know, actually, I think it's because it has no uh, surface, but I'll figure that out, and then we'll go back to this. All right, so I have an easy fix. It does um, uh, destroy the mesh, uh, or excuse me, it uh, makes it, uh, it breaks it down to make it editable, but that's okay. We're gonna take the extrude here, um, the extrude object and the spline, and we're gonna select the polygon and just right click and say reverse normals. And that solves it. So uh, I tried doing everything, including uh, spinning this around in the um, cloner object and uh, it didn't, uh, at the time, it didn't work. Actually, let's try that again because the cloner might have been disabled, and then we'll move on. Uh, but if it does work, then we could use that and keep it editable. Oh, well, then there's that. Okay, so uh, I guess we're going to use that. Um, so I'm going to set this down at negative uh, 30 uh, centimeters. And uh, one thing I want to do also is take the cloner, and we're going to drop that cloner in a connect object and make sure that we set the Fong mode to manual and uh, we're going to keep the tolerance at one centimeter um, or we're going to set it to one centimeter and now um, if we were to uh, scale the end side down a bit um, it would break these apart but if it's close enough uh, it will actually connect all of these object and objects and it will help uh, because eventually we're going to drop this into a uh, subdivision surface so we have this now and i'm going to build this entire effect and then we'll make it animatable and offset it. Uh, but uh, the next thing I'm going to do is add a bevel deformer under the Mo extrude, and uh, I want to keep it at um, maybe like five centimeters here. And this is pretty strong, pretty solid. Um, and uh, Ian had a really cool effect where he did this, uh, but he did make his um, his extrude editable, and then he used a selection tag. And we'll, we'll try that um, with two Mo extrudes. And the second Mo extrude actually uses the um, uh, polygon selection. And uh, it will then uh, pull that down. So we're going to just not extrude this one at all. Let's keep it at 0 0.99, 0 0.99, 0 0.99. See how that works. And keep it at 0, 0, 0. Um, actually, we do want to scale this in. So this is going to create the geometry. Then the second one is going to be how we um, pull it down in theory. And that works if we turn off the connect object. So let me uh, test this. Okay, so um, yeah, actually, scratch all of that. We're going to go back. Uh, you can debug it and figure it out if you'd like. I'm not going to do that live because shouldn't do that live. Do that far too often live. But anyways, okay, so we do have this. And uh, this effect here works very well. Um, we can use the bevel deformer to uh, kind of pull this in. And this is actually better than my example because there's a lot more flexibility here in the actual build. Um, with the uh, with the bevel, and uh, if we actually just add a little bit of subdivision, that's basically our final effect there. Uh, but uh, you don't need to, um, because uh, the um, subdivision is going to be slow, and in fact the bevel is going to be slow. So uh, we'll turn that off for a moment. I'm also going to drop this all in a subdivision surface, and uh, set it to three, and turn on the bevel. And uh, actually, I will. I'll turn the bevel down to one centimeter, and that's basically how this effect works. Uh, but to make it animated, we have to do a few a uh, few different things. So during animation, I'm going to turn off bevel and subdivision uh, surfaces. I'm also going to take the um, uh, Fong angle and turn it down to one uh, one degree, and uh, I'm going to take the Mo extrude, and this is where we're going to start animating. We're actually going to take out all of the um, uh, the Z extrusion, and we're going to take the uh, scale of this and uh, set it to 0.8 by 0.8 by 0.8, and that'll be good. 
So we're going to take this uh, mo extrude and we're going to drop a plane effector in. And that's where we're going to actually get this control. Uh, let's keep this above though. Okay. And uh, we're going to set it to negative 30 on the z axis. And uh, we could um, set it to basically whatever we want. Uh, we can scale it down. And this is the scale is going to allow us to uh, control the actual uh, the extrusion uh, scale here. And uh, that looks really good. We could rotate it if we really need to, um, which could have a really cool effect, you know, um, if we want to uh, create a very unique geometry here. Um, uh, you know, this isn't uh, rendering because I have no lights in here, but uh, this effect um, kind of displays a very unique style. So, um, you know, go with that, run with that, have some fun. Um, so anyways, uh, now that we have a plane effector, controlling this, this is where the power comes in because MoGraph has something called falloff and falloff is our friend. So we're going to create two plane effectors and uh, we're going to have, um, we're going to call them plane one and plane two. And I'm going to go into the Mo extrude and make sure that we have both of them affecting it. And plane two is going to be negative 60 and it's not going to control the scale or the rotation. Plane one will not control rotation. It might control scale. We'll try scaling it down a little bit and see how that goes. But this is going to have a positive 30. Um, and uh, positive 30 in the z-axis is going to uh, push these up, and then the negative 60 is going to pull it right back down. Uh, but what we need to do is uh, make the size of this 80 by 80 by 80 centimeters, and then uh, pull down the uh, falloff to maybe 75, and take the falloff of the original to like 20. And uh, now uh, we can actually just drop this under the other one and uh, and we could scale it up. Um, actually, I guess we have to do both at the same time, but uh, we can just uh, change the scale here. And what happens is this effect um, causes these to move up and then down and across. Now, uh, I think the best way to handle this effect is to actually put this in the center of one of these hexagons. And we'll uh, drop it down underneath it, maybe 50 centimeters. And now what we can do is animate this value right here. Um, so we'll take the scale and we'll just push it up. And uh, we'll just uh, continue to push it up. And it's uh, continually uh, getting this nice offset effect here. Now, uh, one thing I did in my render is I also added a delay effector. So we can do that as well by just grabbing the delay effector, and this is going to help add some secondary animation. We're going to set it to spring mode, and uh, let's try leaving it around 40%. And then let's take these, uh, the fall off on these, and take the second one. I'm going to turn this down to 70 uh, centimeters uh, instead, so we get a little bit more time and fall off there. And I'm going to take the scale and animate it from zero over the course of 60 frames all the way to. 1,000, uh, nope, 2,000, and uh, let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, so we might animate that even further. Let's try 4,000, and um, that is still really small, so we might have to make it even bigger. Yeah, we're going to need to make that bigger. So uh, it's that center uh, circle right there that you can tell where it's actually uh, too small. So if we just keep on pulling this up, we might want to turn off the delay effector um, as well. So let's go back here. Oh, if we go to frame 60, turning off the delay effectors revealed something. If we set this to 8,000, it's set. If we set this to 5,000, it's a lot closer, maybe 6. Uh, let's try 7. Okay, 8,000 should be good. It's our friend. That's going to work. Um, so we're going to have it scale up from 0% scale to 8,000. Um, and uh, yeah, that will scale and animate. And oh, I got rid of it. Let's add that keyframe back in. All right, and then now uh, we hit play. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's working. I think it will look better as far as animation timing if we set it to 10,000. And uh, yeah, that's how the effect works. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up once we get a camera uh, set up here. Let's just use our same camera from the original 
this is a new scene file so I don't mind taking that apart and then we'll just drop our material on this I'm going to use my darker material and then I'm going to grab my lighting setup which is the Octane Studio Kit with a couple of soft boxes and an HDR and uh, I'm going to grab the live viewer window and make it a little smaller and then we will uh, render this um, I do want to pull the framing back a bit to maybe 36 uh, centimeters. Um, let's pull the actual camera back. And uh, this is oddly uh, framed for some reason. So it doesn't seem to want to update the camera position. So let's see if there is another camera causing problems. Well, that's weird. Uh, anyways, I guess we'll just go ahead and leave it here. Um, thank you so much for watching, and uh, I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, just one quick tip. Remember to turn on the bevel in the subdivision, and uh, then we can hit render, and it'll take a lot longer to pull it in. Uh, it's going to take a lot longer to load the geometry, but um, the geometry has that really nice effect there. And if we go back to the beginning and hit play, and... Uh, for some reason, this camera's not working. Let's just create a new Octane camera here, and we'll jump into there. Um, oh, you know what? We might not be using this view as render view as well. So that could be it. Uh, anyways, we'll just position this, and uh, we'll pull the camera out, and uh, let's just move it up right there. And uh, let's hit play. And it will slowly start to pull up a few more frames here. And uh, this is how that effect is created. So this is a very, uh, I think, honestly, I think a good word for it is a very desirable effect. Um, another thing you can do, by the way, is you can right click on the rig and give it a Cinema 4D Octane object tag. And uh, set the motion blur to transform and vertex if you're into adding motion blur on very subtle things. Um, and I'm also going to take the uh, aperture and set it to 10 and focus right here in the center or uh, that's actually 15 I can't count but that's okay um, and um, back in the object tag I'm also going to uh, set the subdivision amount to 3 and uh, now we're going to subdivide in uh, in render time so anyways guys that's it for this tutorial thank you so much for watching I'm Sam from thinkparticle.com and I'll see you guys next time